Charlie Hurley signed for Sunderland in September 1957 from Millwall for £18,000 plus a promise to play a friendly match at the Den, which in all probability would add £3,000 to the transfer fee, in today's money this would equate to over a £20 million pound transfer. His playing career at Sunderland got off to a very dicey start with a 7-0 defeat at Bloomfield Road to a Stanley Matthews-inspired Blackpool, followed by a 6-0 defeat the following week at Turf Moor. By the end of his first season, Sunderland were relegated for the very first time to the second division as the Bank of England scandal caught up with them. Charlie recovered and became the linchpin that manager Alan Brown rebuilt the team around and eventually brought them gloriously back to the first division in 1963-64. By this time, it was not just the fans of Millwall and Sunderland who knew what a player Charlie Hurley was, his reputation had spread nationally and internationally, he would eventually earn 40 era caps. In 1963, he was awarded the Northeast Footballer of the Year Award. In 1964, he was runner-up to Bobby Moore in the Football Writers Association Player of the Year Award. In 1979, in Sunderland AFC's centenary year, he was voted by the fans our Player of the Century. In 2007, he was voted Best Player Ever to play for Millwall in the Lion Roars fans poll. The respect that Hurley is held in at Sunderland traverses generations and is mutual. His emotional attachment to the club and its fans is the stuff of legend, we got him and he got us, to steal a phrase usually associated with another big Irishman who graced our paddock. Charlie Hurley went on to play 401 games for Sunderland in every competition, scoring 26 goals. Had we been counting back then, his numbers on assists would have been through the roof as the chant Charlie Charlie rolled down from the stands in response to the Colossus venturing forwards for corners and free kicks to cause mayhem in the opposition box. My younger Sunderland supporting friends often ask me, was he really that good? John Charles no less rated him one of the best centre-halves he had ever played against. Jeff Hurst said. I played a few times against Charlie Hurley. He was a terrific footballing centre-half. He was very good in the air, but he was also very good on the ball, and not many centre-halves of that era were. Colin Todd, arguably the best ever all-round player to come through our youth system, said. Charlie was a very majestic player. He used to dominate the opposing centre-forwards. He could also pass it, he could get the ball down, and he could play centre-forward. You mentioned Beckenbauer, he was probably a bit more mobile than Charlie but Charlie had a very good feel for the ball and he was very strong. I first saw Charlie play in the 1965-66 season. In my very first game, he made a goal, clattering into the post as he reached for a corner. 